and in a in a fair and transparent manner. I, I think if if they choose to go ahead and prosecute these cases, we expect, we certainly anticipate that they would do it in a fair, just, and transparent manner. But, are, but is the detention of these people uh, in and of itself, leaving aside the question of subsequent prosecution, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is the detention of these people uh, being handled in a fair and transparent manner? I could only go back to what the Saudi government has said, and the Saudi government, and I can't speak on their behalf, but um, they have laid out a case that these officials were guilty of corruption, of sorts, alleged corruption of so, some sort. So I'm not going to go beyond what the Saudi government has said. We're not there on the ground to assess uh, the cases of these individuals, so I'm not going to have any more for you, you on that. you are there on the ground. I mean, you have an embassy. You have Well, we certainly do, but Can we're I not finish? there involved with those cases, Arshad. So I'm not going to have a lot for you on this. I we are continuing to monitor the situation. They have assured us. Um, that any prosecutions that take place will be done in a fair and transparent manner, and we hope that they will hold up to that. And then following up on Michelle's uh, question, um, is it helpful for the government of Saudi Arabia to assert that it regards uh, actions by two different uh, Sorry, actions by? By two different countries or players in two different countries mm -hmm. as acts of war. Is that helpful? Is it helpful for it to say that it regards unspecified actions by Hezbollah as acts of war and, and similarly to regard the missile as an act of aggression? Well, I, I, think we ha I think we have to look at the region in which they live. Uh, when we talk about concerns about terrorism and destabilizing forces in the region, there's no one that knows that better than some of the countries in that backyard. And so I, I think it's natural. I mean, imagine this. There was a, a, a missile shot into Saudi Arabia the believed target was the airport or somewhere close by the airport. Imagine if that had happened here in the United States. It's shocking. I don't think it should surprise any of us that the government would consider that to be a potential act of terrorism. But beyond that, I, d I don't have anything more for you, okay? My question, though, is about whether it's helpful. I mean, let's take the case of Lebanon. Is it helpful for the Saudis to say they regard unspecified actions by Hezbollah as acts of war? From You know, you, you talk about the region. It's region with a lot of ferment. Is that helpful from the U.S. government's point of view well, I, I to think, hear that rhetoric? I think we also know the kinds of activities that Hezbollah has been uh, responsible for. I mean, as Americans, and we have talked about this here before, the Marine barracks bombing, responsible for killing hundreds of Americans. Our vice president went out to one of our Marine barracks here not too long ago to honor those that were killed. So it should be no surprise that Hezbollah is a terror organization. It should be no surprise that Saudi Arabia is upset when a missile gets launched into its territory. That's all I have for you on that. If okay. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization, what about Qatab Hezbollah in Iraq, headed by a man whom the U.S. authorities had imprisoned at Camp Cropper for killing Americans? Yeah, Isn't that also Lori, a terror I know. You and I, uh, we covered this about a week and a half ago. I just have to refer you back to what we said at that Sorry, time. I okay, I don't, I don't have anything new for you on that. One of your responses to Arshad, you said yeah. they have assured us that they will handle these cases in a fair and transparent manner. Yeah. Who, who did they, who, when did they give you this assurance? I, I who, have who I have been it? I have been told I, I don't know who but I've been told that that has been their pledge. So there has been some kind of contact at a senior level. I, I don't know level I don't know at which since, level, but I know that there have been conversations since the arrests or since the detention. I know that there have been conversations. All right, and conversations just, have taken and place. And then just last last one, do you have any uh, any thoughts at all about the rather uh, interesting location of detention? that these people are being held. Yeah, I, have not, I have nothing for you on that. <laughs> okay. Heather, on, uh, Shall we move on? Uh, okay. Just on, on Saudi Arabia really okay. quick. Um, when it comes to the internal problems going on or, the, the, or whatever is going on in Saudi Arabia, on top of uh, Yemen, Lebanon, uh, with Iran, does this Secretary of the State Department <coughs> believe that this provides a greater incentive or bolster the case for uh, the issue with Qatar to be uh, settled for well, Saudi Arabia I, to come to the I to certainly think table? It, I think, certainly think it brings home to many players in the region that there are some very serious issues that they're dealing with that we're dealing with. Uh, we have followed the GCC dispute since, when did it first begin, May or so? How many months has this gone on? Um, you know, we still call upon all the parties to sit down and work out some sort of an arrangement because we see that if they're not fully cooperating and working together, that the region be can become further destabilized. So perhaps what is going on now 
will be sort of a wake up call for the nations to work together and to come to some sort of a, get some sort of resolution. And, and the secretary made it seem like it was up to Saudi Arabia to to come to the table and discuss that Qatar was a willing party and the other did not. Yeah, you know, uh, look, um, Qatar has said that it's uh, willing to to sit down and and start negotiations. I don't recall where the Saudis are on this. Uh, for that matter, but I can I can check with our folks to see if there are any updates for but you. Given, okay. given the Saudi role in that, and yeah. given the Saudi role in the war on Yemen, does the State Department not have some concerns that the current Saudi policies are themselves contributing to destabilization? I think we know exactly where the responsibility lies in the region for much of the destabilization, and we've seen the activities of Iran. Uh, we've seen the activities of Iran in Yemen. We've seen the hand of Iran in Syria. We've seen the hand of Iran elsewhere. Where Iran, uh, where Iran's government, and I should be clear about saying that, because uh, we don't take issue with the Iranian people, we take issue with the government of Tehran. Where they show up, uh, trouble tends to follow. This sounds okay. like full support for everything Saudi's doing. I, I'm, look, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying let's recognize the region that they are in. Let's recognize the destabilizing factors that are in that region. Would you Go ahead. comment on the resignation of the Lebanese Prime Minister from Riyadh? With what? Would you comment on the resignation of Saad Hariri, the Lebanese yeah. Prime Minister, and doing it from the venue in which he did, which is Riyadh, Saudi Arabia? Oh, in Riyadh, you said. Riyadh, okay. Yeah. okay. Apologies. Um, you know, look, we have had a, a, a good relationship with the government of Lebanon. Uh, as you may recall, the prime minister was here meeting with the president. I was, I believe it was in the month of June uh, that he visited uh, the White House and did, I believe, press, press conference with the president. Um, you know, our relationship with the government will not change. We'll continue to just follow and monitor the situation there. Okay. Well, uh, many of your allies would like to see a government or a future government of Lebanon that does not include Hezbollah. But in fact, the facts on the ground would dictate otherwise because they represent a large portion of the Lebanese population. And in fact, they keep that formula uh, on balance, so to speak. So what is your, what is your position on well, that? Well, they, they um, certainly have some uh, representation mm -hmm. on the ground there in, in Lebanon. Um, Lebanon overall is a strong partner of the United States. They have strong uh, national state institutions in the war on terror. Uh, the United States strongly supports the legitimate institutions in the Lebanese state. We expect all members of the international community to uh, respect fully those institutions and the sovereignty and the political independence of Lebanon. So you would not insist on a future government of Lebanon that uh, excludes Hezbollah? You know, I, I don't. We strongly support the government of Lebanon, and we do regard, as, as you well know, uh, Hezbollah to be a terror organization. Does that, that, okay. that, does that statement of support mean that there is no consideration, given the current uh, uncertainty, of uh, any kind of reduction or pause and assistance to the Lebanese army? I'm, I'm not aware of any changes. But you could uh, ask DOD if there's something more on that. Were you hey. given a heads up on Hi. the resignation? Uh, I do not believe that we were. Uh, let me uh, let me double check that. Okay. 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 All right. Should we move on? Okay. Yes. Hariri, and actually on that question, it overlaps a bit. As you say, he was here in June. He met the secretary, he met mm -hmm. the president. A uh, warm word was said about it in public. He has now stepped down, apparently because Saudi Arabia felt that he was his government was a front for Hezbollah and Iranian influence. I, I'm Do not, you think I, you've been taken in? I'm not. I'm not going to be characterized. I'm not going to characterize why this decision was made, I could refer you to him and refer you to his government to answer that question, but I'm just not going to... that he didn't give you a heads up or this, said You know, all I can up. say, and, and I'm just checking my notes here, and to answer your question, no, we were not aware that he was going to resign beforehand. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Lori, hi, what do you want to... believe that by supporting Prime Minister Abadi in Iraq, that that is a way to contain Iranian influence in the region? I, I think there are, 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 are numerous ways uh, to contain Iranian influence in the region, and one of them is a step that uh, Prime Minister Abadi has recently taken. And if you look at the relationship, their strengthening relationship with the government of Saudi Arabia, that's a real step in the right direction. They're all Arabs there. Uh, you've seen Saudi Arabia reopen um, the uh, land crossing 
between Iraq and Saudi Arabia that had been closed for many years. There are taking steps. They're taking steps in a positive direction. When we were at the United Nations, uh, the government of uh, Saudi Arabia and others talked about helping to finance some of the big major reconstruction projects in Iraq. We just saw a report that came out, I think it was in the news earlier today, about uh, the level of devastation in Iraq. Understandably so, because there's been the big battle fought against ISIS over the past few years. So there's going to be a lot of money that's required to rebuild Iraq, and the fact that some of those nations are willing to take that on is pretty incredible. It was just not that long ago that the United States was paying for all those big reconstruction projects. Times have really changed. We're helping out, certainly, but governments in the area are stepping up uh, and they're helping. Do you see the Saudis as your partner in containing Iranian influence in Iraq through things like paying for reconstruction? You know, I, I, I think we have we have some shared interests, and we have some shared interests in terms of uh, terrorism and fighting terrorism and recognizing the malign influence of Iran in the region and around the world and other terror groups. We would like to see peace and stability in Iraq. We'd like to see peace and stability in Syria and elsewhere. And I think to the extent that we can work together uh, with Saudi Arabia and with other nations, then we're, we're better off as a result. Okay, if okay. I could just follow up then the, on the stability in Iraq. Um, the Iraqi, the KR, the Kurdish regional government has warned about constant, that, that Iraq is deploying heavy weapons, including U.S. weapons to the front lines with Kurdish forces while the talks are continuing. And it doesn't really look like Baghdad is so interested in a peaceful settlement. What is your, what is your comment on that deployment of weapons against the... Lori, I, I would disagree with your assertion, first of all, okay? Um, last time we were here together was, I think it was a week ago today. And think about the change that has come in the past week alone, where you have had the Kurds and the Iraqi central government sitting down and actually having conversations together. It was not that long ago that they were firing weapons at one another. So the fact that they're willing to sit down and have a dialogue, something that we have been encouraging for weeks now, I think is a step in the right direction. Uh, we applaud those steps. We look forward uh, to more conversations. Uh, between them so that they can try to come to some sort of arrangement where they can adhere to the Constitution. We have had our ambassador, Ambassador Silliman, he was uh, recently up meeting with uh, Mr. Barzani, um, Netravan Barzani, in uh, just a few, I believe it was just a few days ago, up in Erbil. So I think, I think some positive steps are, are, are being made. Okay. okay? All right, Lori, this is not the Lori show today, okay? Some days it's the Matt Lee show, some days it's the Lori show, but we, let's move on, okay? Okay. Yes. Uh, there was another terrorist attack in Afghanistan on a news channel. Yes. Uh, do you think the situation uh, Afghanistan is getting worse? The South Asia policy is no longer working? First, I want to say the South, the South Asia policy is new. Uh, we are optimistic that we can make some progress. I mean, think about the number of years that U.S. and coalition forces have now been in Afghanistan. Think of all the lives that were lost, the blood that has been shed, the money that has been spent in Afghanistan. We are committed to trying to find a peaceful solution to Afghanistan, but recognize that the government of Afghanistan will have to play a big part in that. Um, Secretary Tillerson, as have our military officials, mm -hmm. talked about how over the past 16 years there have been 16 one-year plans. And now we see this, instead of one-year plans, changing every single year as being a solid, fortified plan to push forward in the future. So we're optimistic about that. Now, you ask about uh, today's attack in Kabul. Um, for those of you who are not aware of it, it was an attack on a television station that was called Shamshad. It took place in Kabul. Uh, we believe a couple of its employees were killed there. This is not the first time that journalists have been attacked in Kabul. Uh, Folks, as, as reporters yourselves, as a former reporter myself, we deplore any acts of violence on the media. I know some like to get snarky in here and talk about, not in this room, but in the press, the Washington Post in particular, about my support for the work that you do, my support for the First Amendment, the support that we put out for journalists across the world who are doing difficult jobs under very difficult conditions. We are so lucky here in the United States that reporters, by and large, do not face death threats, that you can write whatever you want to write, even though the government may not like it. But that is not the case in many parts of the world. And we've seen that here in Afghanistan once again. Remember, we saw a woman uh, in Turkey whose throat was slashed. She had been a reporter in Syria. 
We don't know who's responsible for that, but it's pretty clear that that was terrorism. It is disgusting, it is wrong, and we will continue from this room, I will continue to advocate for the rights of journalists, whether it's in Afghanistan, whether it's in Syria, or whether it's in Turkey. So I'm glad that you asked that question about that um, today. Our commitment to Afghanistan is unwavering, and our thoughts and our prayers go out to those who were who lost their lives in Afghanistan, just <clears throat> trying to do the work and putting the word out there. What what what, what was the snark that you're? Uh, maybe we can tell it. Someone tell in the us. Washington Post wrote a snarky article about how I defend uh, reporters' uh, free press, how I report the free press. So, I have, uh, that was basically anyway. it. And I think, you know what? That is what we do here at the State Department. We support and advocate for freedom of speech. Right. And if somebody wants to make fun of me for that, have at it. But that's what we do right here. That's what we care about. The work that you do, I value it. My colleagues value it. And that's something that we value across the world. I have another South Asia okay. related question. Uh, anything else on Afghanistan today? Another South Asia terrorism related question. Okay. Uh, last week, China blocked uh, at the UN Security Council a uh, US, Britain, and France sponsored resolution to uh, designate a Pakistan based terrorist, uh, Azhar mm -hmm. Masood, as a terrorist. Uh, what do you have to say on that? And what's the next step the US is trying to follow on it? Okay. Uh, remind me, this is a, uh, he's a Pakistani, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, that, uh, okay. 1267. Thank you. We've got a lot of countries involved there, so somewhere, sometimes I'm not always sure where exactly to look for my notes. There we go. B for bad guys. There we go. Okay, so you were talking about uh, the Jaish A. Muhammad leader, uh, Masood Azhar. Is that yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah. Um, we are aware of this matter. Uh, we certainly think that he is a bad guy. Uh, we would like to have him on that list. There are some committee discussions that are underway over whether to add uh, him or the entity to um, the sanctions list. Uh, that list is confidential um, under the United Nations. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to comment on the deliberations at the United Nations under that. Um, I'd have to refer you to the Chinese government to explain why they voted the way they did. But we certainly think uh, that this guy is a bad guy. We consider the organization to be a foreign terrorist organization under U.S. law. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, so the administration's decision to uh, end protections for Nicaraguans in the country and extend those uh, to those from Honduras. Uh, how much of a role did the State Department play in this, and uh, why uh, end protections for one extend for another? Okay. Uh, so a lot of this is under Department of Homeland Security. Um, the State Department does have an inter play an interagency role in this matter. So the State Department and other agencies all work together, but this is largely a, a Department of Homeland Security program. Um, I can tell you that our Acting Assistant Secretary Elaine Duke announced on November the 6th, that was yesterday, right? Acting Secretary. Acting, thank you. No, no, uh, Acting Secretary, not Assistant Secretary. I'm used to saying Assistant Secretary, so pardon me. Thank you. Uh, she had announced yesterday her decision to terminate the temporary protective status designation for Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. Uh, people from Nicaragua here in the United States have a year to be able to work out uh, their situation. Um, she concluded that additional time is necessary to assess the country mm -hmm. of Honduras. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd have to refer you to her office as to why that determination was made. You know, overall, I can tell you, you know, the name itself explains a lot of it. Temporary protected status. Um, this was put in place 20-some years ago as a result of um, some naturally, uh, natural occurrences that took place uh, in Nicaragua and Honduras and other places, flooding, hurricanes, that type of thing. So I believe the government looked at the situation there on the ground and assessed, um, assessed that it is no longer unsafe in, in that way and that people uh, should be allowed to head back home. So beyond that, I just have to refer you to um, the acting secretary's office and for just that. Really quickly, is this the type of, of um, situation that Secretary Tillerson himself <laughs> participates in? Does this rise to the secretary's level? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But beyond that, just in terms of the interagency stuff, I'm just not going to be able to comment on some of those deliberations. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I ask a yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Just, so I know you may not be able to answer this, but was the um, Acting Secretary's determination consistent with what the State Department recommended? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Okay. Say, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me call, let me call on some other people, sure. okay? Right. Okay. Because it's not the Saeed show either. <laughs> <laughs>
Come on. I like you. All right. All right. We'll do it. Okay, Let's go. Really, very, very quickly. Uh, last week, the Israelis denied entry to a Palestinian American yes. uh, who works with the Amnesty International uh, under you know the, the pretext that he is you know he's, uh, he does advocacy against it. Are you concerned that Israel may be using two different scales uh, in, in terms of treating Americans? Should do they? treat all Americans the same when they enter into the country? We've certainly seen that report about the Amnesty International person um, who was stopped at a crossing last week. Uh, we are always concerned about the safety and security of Americans. Uh, my understanding is that he is a U.S. citizen. Uh, beyond that, I just have to refer you to the government of Israel for any information. But you would expect Israel to treat all Americans the same way, right? Would I expect? I would expect Israel to treat yeah, all, all Americans American in in accordance in accordance with the law. Certainly. Okay. All right. Oh, time. Okay. Uh, government of France said today they have invited 100 uh, head of states and government to their conference summit in December in Paris, but not President Trump. Okay, I'm and not aware of that. And the same day we we, we learned that uh, even Syria is to join the the Paris Agreement. So, do you think that? Uh, United States and their president should be present at such an event, and don't you feel that America is more and more alone on this topic? Well, first of all, I find it ironic that the government of Syria, okay, would say that it wants to be involved and that it cares so much in climate and things like CO2 gases. If the government of Syria cared so much about what was put in the air, then it wouldn't be gassing its own people. Um, as some of you may know, our Undersecretary for Political Affairs, Tom Shannon, uh, will be joining a meeting later this month in um, Bonn, Germany, in which we will, right, in Bonn, is it this week? Okay, sorry, I'm off on my dates a, few, a little bit, but he'll be joining um, that meeting uh, representing the U.S. delegation in, in Bonn. And, pardon me? Sorry. Next week. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm not totally crazy on my time. Um, that is the Conference of Parties, the COP23 COP at the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. And uh, Under Secretary Tom Shannon is leading the U.S. delegation on that. Um, in terms of our overall position on the Paris Agreement, as you may well know, nothing has changed in our position. Uh, we will still follow the President's decision on that matter. Uh, the United States looks at that and we intend to withdraw from the Paris Agreement as soon as we're eligible to do so, unless the President, and he's been very clear about saying this, unless he's able to identify terms of engagement that he feels are more favorable to American businesses, workers, and taxpayers. Do you know, is that something that uh, Undersecretary Shannon is going to be exploring while he is leading the U.S. delegation? I don't know. I, I haven't asked him. I, I saw him. He was in um, Bangladesh. We spent a little time together there, but we did not talk right. about this issue. I can certainly see if I have something uh, on that. It's because he, he's leading the U.S. delegation, so this is a State Department delegation, essentially. I mean, there are... Uh, are there, there are other agencies represented? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll find out. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious because not, not only did the Syrians say that they would join and whether or not you think it's ironic or I mean, seriously, come ridiculous, on. Syria whatever. Syria joining? But, Syria really well, cares? Well, it, it is another indication of Please. America first being America alone, is it not? No, Matt. No. You had a vote I mean, in if, the if UN. You, if you want to put in some kind of ago, moral equivalency between Syria and the United it's States, that's just... Okay. That's just, frankly, laughable, oh, no, no. and I'm not even going to go there. I, I, it's not that it's Syria that happened to be the last country other than the U.S. to, 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 to join it. It's, it, could be, it could have been any country. Mm -hmm. um, the, point, the point of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, you're the only country that's not in it anymore. Look, the president has said that he is going to assess this situation. Okay. If we could get a more favorable deal for American businesses, American workers, and taxpayers, then we will look at that. But we can we continue to go forward with the plan of pulling out of the Paris Accords. But right. there are other accords that we may still remain in. Okay. Can you explain why exactly the administration thought it would be appropriate to host a, an event promoting coal use at the Conference of Parties? Yeah. Um, there may be people who do not like coal. But the reality is that coal powers about 30 percent or so of the electricity and the power here in the United States. Coal is a reality, whether people like it or not. It is a reality. It heats our homes. It, uh, 
It, uh, also, it, some, as some, some argue that it heats the planet as okay. well. Okay, but, so the fa but the fact is, but coal you're, you're is a reality. Up, Whether people like it or not, it's a reality. And so it's a reality up, that we have to deal with. And so the United States is holding some conversations in which the United States will talk about coal. The United States will also talk about nuclear power. That is a reality. Some countries don't like it, but it is reality. And we're dealing with that right now. So you went after the Syrian government for allegedly caring about CO2 emissions. Uh -huh. And yet this country, the, your, the United States, is, is, is hosting this event that, that promotes the use of coal, which So now you're comparing CO2. coal to gassing civilians you, in Syria. No, that's not at all. And I don't think anyone in this room thinks that's what I'm doing. Well, you the, talked about CO2 emissions I, in I'm Syria. I'm saying, look, if Syria cares so much about the environment, Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a ridiculous conversation, Matt. But Syria cares so much about its environment, it's not gassing and killing innocent civilians, including women and children. Okay, let's, I, mo let's move on from there. I, I, uh, this is, this is, you'll have to take this, I think, okay. very quick. It's okay. on Bahrain. I asked you about these pe uh, people who were arrested. Uh, it was your yeah. last briefing. Since in, in between then and now, there have been some letters that have been written on their behalf to the, okay. the Secretary of the Department. Can you, well, I know that you probably don't, I forgot to I ask. I do not have anything new for you on can that. You I, can, I can check in a Thank follow you. up, okay? Yes. Ilhan, hi. Thank you. Uh, on Turkey uh, visa situation, yesterday it seemed like there was some progress on the visa, and the U.S. statement uh, came out from your office at the U.S received some high-level assurances from Turkey. Then uh, the Turkish embassy here in Washington issued another statement mm -hmm. and basically said that it uh, denied uh, and said that uh, the Turkish government cannot provide any assurances. And also, your statement does not reflect the real, uh, uh, do not reflect the truth and consider it odd. So, uh, what is the yeah so where truth. where what is the situation right now i think i think that's the question um so we were able to announce uh i believe it was just yesterday that a limited number of appointments are now being taken for all non-immigrant visa classes so people who uh, want to obtain visas are now able to do so in both istanbul and ankara um, that is based on what we consider to be improved security conditions at our U.S. mission in Turkey. Um, we are prioritizing, we're, we're only able to do this on a limited basis right now, but we are prioritizing medical, humanitarian, and also student visas in those cases. We've had a series of uh, what I would describe as fairly positive conversations with the government of Turkey. I and mean, this is certainly a step in the right direction. It's a positive step. We have received limited assurances that um, if something should happen with our staff, if Turkey wants to detain our staff, that we will be given a heads up. That's uh, among the things that we were, uh, we were assured. We were told that they wouldn't arrest our people simply for doing their jobs. Uh, we still have uh, two of our locally employed staff members who uh, have been detained. Um, in terms of Turkey's uh, questioning of uh, our previous statements, I can just show you, uh, I can tell you that the safety and security of our folks is a top issue. The people who were detained as a natural course of their business had to engage with law enforcement uh, with the Turkish government. Uh, that is something that is an appropriate part of their job. It is a part of their job description. And for Turkey to uh, put people in jail and claim that they are uh, you know, involved in activities when they're simply doing their jobs, we think is incorrect. But nevertheless, we've taken, they've taken some steps in the right direction and we've taken some steps in the right direction. So limited services means students, just three? We are, we are prioritizing um, certain types of visas because it's still somewhat limited. Medical, humanitarian, and also student visas for now. Okay. That's okay. Not, there's not a quantity, like a number. No, there's, there? not, there's, there's not a number. It's just uh, we have limited people who are able to work on that, and so we're pushing forward. Okay, we're going to have to wrap it up, so I'll take, I'll take one last question. Uh, hold on. <coughs> Look, I've already called him, so hey, yeah. Okay. So last week, a uh, Cuban foreign minister just uh, held a press conference here in Washington and claiming that there was not at all any attacks just in the uh, U.S. Embassy in Havana. So what is your response to that? I don't have his comments directly in front of me, so I hesitate to comment on something that I have not seen myself. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. And please, um, regarding 
Again, the situation with the visas. Mm -hmm. Um, has, has there been any change given the difficulty for Cubans to travel abroad, like to, to Bogota, to access their visas to come to the United States? Last I've heard, that's where we're still uh, processing visas for people who want to come to the United States. <coughs> One last thing, please. Yes. The Cuban government said that Ameri Cuban Americans can now travel, if they wish, to uh, Cuba to dock in tourist areas with recreational vessels. How does the State Department see this? Uh, I'm not aware of that, so I'm sorry I don't have an answer for you on that. Okay? Thanks, guys. We're going to go. Okay. Yeah. I really want to know. From UCLA who were arrested in China. From where? From UCLA who were arrested in China. Have you confirmed that? Have you been in touch with Chinese authorities? I, I'm not aware of that. Did that, ju did that just happen? Did it happened, that just I think, occur? overnight then, today. Okay. I, I don't have any information on that, but I can look into it for you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.